chapter 6 and verse 33 Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 Hallelujah Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 and also put a finger in James, the book of James, chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. That's Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. And also James, <coughs> chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. I'm going to be speaking to you on the subject tonight of what's faith got to do with it? What's faith got to do with it? I'm sure you've heard the popular song by Tina Turner, What's Love Got to Do With It? Tonight we're talking about what's faith got to do with it? Again, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. And also we're looking at James chapter 1 verses 2 through 4 I'm giving you time to get those <coughs> hallelujah somebody say what's faith got to do with it amen and I'm reading from Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 it says but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, Brother Usher, would you help Sister Lacey if she needs it. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all, say somebody say all, these things shall be, somebody say shall be, added unto you. I'm going to say it one more time. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. I'm reading James chapter 1. James chapter 1, beginning at verse 2. It says, My brethren and sistren, <laughs> count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, <coughs> that the trying of your faith works patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Uh-huh. Y'all got that? It says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience but let patience have her perfect work 
that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. I'm going to lay this down so I can look at you. Amen. All right. <laughs> Amen. All right. So this is our third week talking about walking in faith. Amen. Amen. We're talking about walking in faith and trusting in God for everything. And in week one, we learned what faith is and how it works by using an analogy of waiting for the bus. Man, we heard a message called, the bus is coming, all right? And how we learned in some way that the bus would be coming to a certain place at a certain time and how we believed that information and we got ourselves together and got to the bus stop to wait for the bus to arrive. Yeah. Through this, we learned how faith comes by hearing the word of God, and how we receive information about God, and after we've heard it, we choose to believe that information, and then we act in a manner that demonstrates that we have believed that information. So let me break that down for you. In, in the same way that we, you know, we come to church and we hear the word of God, as we listen to the word of God, or as you read the word of God, faith comes into your heart when you decide to believe that the word of God is true, okay? And then when you decide that the word of God is true, then you begin to act in a manner that says, yes, I believe it. So when the word of God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added unto you, that means when I believe that, my life begins to become rearranged. I start moving things out of the way so I can put God first. Uh -huh. I start moving things out of the way. Everything that I would have put before coming to church or coming to Bible study or, or reading my Bible and praying, I start to push those things aside and seek first the kingdom of God. Why? Because I believe that when I do that, that all these things that I'm seeking for will be added unto me. Amen? All right. So, Last week, we heard a message entitled, Reward, Diligent Seekers Wanted. Amen? We learned that if you really want something out of life that you have never had before, you must be willing to do something that you've never done. There's a lot of people who are guilty of being excited about a certain project in the beginning stages, but then they let their zeal fade because they're not getting the results they wanted fast enough. Others are inconsistent in their approach and are never rewarded because they are not diligent. Uh, we learned according to Hebrews 11 and 6 that without faith, somebody could say it with me, it is impossible to please God. And anyone that comes to God must believe that God is and that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So God is a rewarder of them who seek him, right? Amen. Wrong. There is an adverb in there that says, diligently, those who diligently seek him. Diligence is what connects you to your reward. Uh -huh. Diligence connects you, the seeker, to God who is the rewarder. Amen? All right. Tonight, we are going to try and simplify this even more. And at the same time, try to clear up some misunderstandings that have been held about faith and the practice of faith. Tonight, we're asking the question, what's faith got to do, got to do with it, amen? amen. What's faith got to do with it? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we're asking for your presence to fall upon us tonight in a new and in a special way. We're asking for, the, for your heart to come forth. And as the word of God goes forth, let faith arise that we may respond in a way that says, yes, God, I believe in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. How many of you are glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? All right. I'm glad. I'm glad to see each and every one of you here. The first thing I want to tell you tonight is this, that faith is simply believing God's word is true and then acting on it. Faith, somebody say faith is believing God's word and acting on it. Okay. But since God knows everything already, and since God knows our hearts, our choices, and even the outcomes of those choices, long before we even make them, 
Why then is faith so important that without it, God is not pleased? Why do you think God is not pleased when we don't have faith? Tonight, I'm asking the question, what exactly is faith for? What exactly is faith for? What's faith got to do with it? There have been some misunderstandings about what God's intended purpose of faith is for believers. As we've heard many times here at AOP, this journey with the Lord is all about seeking the kingdom of God and God's righteousness first. And it is after that that all these other things, the house, the place to live, the car, the great spouse, the partner, the lover, the boyfriend, the girlfriend, will be added to us. In other words, our primary goal, Brother Rodney, is that we need to be seeking God's way of doing things rather than seeking our own way of doing things. We need to be seeking his purposes, Brother Tyree, and ultimately seeking to bring glory to God with our lives. Bottom line, walking in faith is not about us. Some, some, somebody say, it ain't about me. It ain't about me. The faith is not our personal spiritual tool to achieve and produce our own desires. Faith is God's spiritual tool given to us to achieve and produce God's desires and build God's kingdom in the earth. Amen? So we got to ask ourselves, then what is God's desire? What is God's desire? The Apostle Paul writes to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and 4, telling him that God's desire is that he would have all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So somebody get this with me. God's desire is that he wants everybody to be saved and to know the truth. The Apostle Peter writes in, in 2 Peter 3 and 9 that the Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen? God's desire is that no one, no one should taste of the eternal death that is total separation from God and that everyone will repent, turn, and come to God. The practice of our faith is to be exercised toward producing God's will. That's what faith is for. Faith is to be exercised toward producing God's will in the earth, and it is God's will that no one be lost, that no one will miss out on salvation, and no one will be separated from eternal life with God. How many of you are glad you're saved? Amen. As born-again believers... That's you, y'all that raised your hand. As born-again believers in the body of Christ, the Holy Spirit has endowed you with spiritual gifts. Has endowed you with spiritual gifts. And, and, and you might be able to, to cook or you might be able to sew. You might be able to uh, work on cars or work on computers. You, you may have a knack with animals or you might be artistic or musically inclined. These gifts are for the edification of of the body of Christ and leading the lost to Christ. Your gift may be more internal, behind the scenes. You might be a writer or someone who knows how to encourage people and motivate them. You may know how to do flower arrangements, even how to groom pets. Amen. <laughs> Your gifts are what God has given you, not just so people can say, oh, look how talented and gifted you are. The trick is applying your faith and using your gifts to produce God's desires in the earth. Using your gifts to help people come into the saving knowledge of Christ. So that none will be lost. Somebody say, we don't want nobody to be lost. Nobody to be lost. Faith is not just about getting your life fixed. Somebody say, it ain't about me. It's not about just getting your life fixed and getting healed and getting a house and a car and a fat bank account and a spouse so you can say, look how fabulous I am. No, it is okay to exercise your faith for healing and getting well. But I ask, for what purpose? 
For what purpose? Is it for your own purposes so you can just feel good and do all the stuff that got you sick in the first place? Ah. Uh. Or will you use your healing to give God glory? Okay. You see where I'm going now? Uh -huh. now, 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 don't get me wrong. Yes, God gets the glory when you are healthy. But when God makes us well, do we forget about the kingdom of God? Yes, it's okay to exercise your faith and your gift for growing your money into prosperity. And yes, God wants us all to be financially well, but for what purpose? Is it for your purposes so you can consume it all in your lust? Or will you use that money to be a blessing to others and advance the kingdom of God for his glory? Yes, by faith, God will help you handle all of your disorders, your drug addictions. And he'll help you pay your bills, keep an apartment, and hold on to a man or woman for longer than three weeks. <laughs> but baby, it ain't about you. Matthew says, all these things will be added. God knows your needs and your desires and God will add them to you as you seek first his kingdom. Amen? Amen. It's okay to exercise your faith for anything that lines up with his will. 1 John chapter 5, 14 and 15 says, This is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. A little click, uh, 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 cliche, uh, clause that happens in Psalms 37 and 5, it tells us, however, that we must commit our ways to the Lord. Commit our ways to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this for you. I ask you a question tonight. Have you committed your ways to the Lord? Because it's a lot of ways you can get things done. Amen. It's a lot of ways you can get things done. But will you do them God's way? And let me just tell you. It's guaranteed that when you decide to do things God's way. You are going to come up against some opposition. Something is going to come against you. Something is going to try your faith. You do things God's way, you're going to run up against some things that will test and try your faith. Things that will challenge your faith in God. Things that will try to shake your very foundation. And the temptation is to get mad and to get frustrated when your faith is being tried. The temptation sometimes is so strong to just want to give up and go back to your old ways of doing things. But just like our monthly scripture reading is telling us, we do not belong with those who turn back and are destroyed. God bless you, Brother Michael. Good to see you. Where do we belong? We belong with those who believe and are saved. Is anybody in the house hearing me tonight? Amen. Is anybody hearing me tonight? Amen. We don't belong with those who turn back and are destroyed. We belong with those who believe and are saved. The book of James tells us in chapter 1, verse 2 and 4, uh, he says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, and sisters, when you are facing all kinds of trials. In other words, he says, get happy about it. Get glad about it. Because the testing of your faith develops perseverance. And see, perseverance is that thing that keeps on going. It's like that Energizer bunny. It keeps you going, pressing on. And perseverance keeps on going and it must finish its work so that you may mature and be complete not lacking anything you heard what it said 
mature, complete, not lacking anything. How many of you want to get into that place? <laughs> well, you're not lacking anything. Just let that rest in your soul for a minute. Not lacking anything. Mature, complete, not lacking. You're, you're in your hard times right now. Uh huh. But believe it or not, it is not God's desire that you perish. You're in your hard times right now. You need to know that God does not want you dead. If God wanted you dead, don't you think it had already been so? Oh, Lord. He has the power of life and death. All he has to do is take his breath back. If God wanted you dead, he'd make it so. God, it's not God's will that any should perish. And it is with great hope that while you are in your hard time, somebody say, I might be in my hard time. But it's God's desire that you will learn to commit your ways to the Lord. Oh, somebody's not hearing me today. That, that in your hard time that you will mature. That you will learn discipline. That your broken places will get fixed. And that your life will become to a place that going without will become a thing of the past. Now hear me, lacking nothing also means that I come to a place of knowing that no matter what state I am in, whether I live in a big house on a hill, behind a dumpster, or camping out in the woods, that I have everything I need in God. Everything that I have need of is in God. There is an attitude change that must come. And God's not doing all this miraculous stuff in your life just so you can sit on top of your pile of blessings like a fat cat saying, look how good I got it. Look what the Lord has done for me. You always hear believers saying stuff, well, I ain't going to have no testimony unless I first have a test. Uh. There ain't no testimony if it ain't no test. Well, not according to the book of James. James says that these tests that you're going through are to develop perseverance, maturity, and completeness. And so that you will be lacking nothing. But again, I ask, for what reason? For what reason? It's not just so you can eat it all up. Not just so you can drink it all up and be merry. How does that glorify God? And fulfill his purpose in your life for kingdom building. The question you must ask yourself is what you are doing on the other side of your struggle. Is it leading anyone to Christ? Is it helping anybody know that God is a savior? Helping them to know that God is a healer. Helping them to know that God is a way maker. That God is a fixer of broken lives. How many God has fixed your life? In one way or another. Do you think that God has brought you into the light, dusted you off, and made you stand up and, and walking in faith as a child of God just so you can sit down and chill? I don't think so. There's work to be done, people. Work to be done. James and the author of Hebrews are speaking to those who are working in the body of Christ. Those who are walking in their callings and spiritual gifts. And when he says that faith without works is dead. And you need to understand tonight that God is not expecting you to work to be good. Uh huh. Because in ourselves, we cannot do enough to match the righteousness of God. There's no way that we could work hard enough to match the righteousness of God. God, however, does expect you to work to be a kingdom builder. God is expecting the greater works that Christ proclaimed we would do. The testing of your faith is to make you complete. What you're going through right now, the testing of your faith is to mature you. The testing of your faith is to teach you 
to persevere and not give up so that you will learn that in God you have everything that you need. You're lacking nothing as you exercise your calling and your spiritual gifts. So don't get mad. Get glad. <laughs> don't be sad. Get happy. It is through your faith that God's purposes will be fulfilled through your life, bringing glory to his name. And, and guess what? You get to enjoy all the blessings that come along with it. Amen. It's not a bad deal, really. When you think about it, it's like being the guy that works at the Porsche dealership. You know, his job and his skills are used to sell cars. But because of his faithfulness, he never has to worry about what he's driving home at night. <laughs> he's always driving a Porsche, amen? Amen. You always get to enjoy the blessings of God along the way as you seek first the kingdom of God. As you take care of kingdom business, God blesses your life and you are able to reap the benefits of everything that God brings into your life. But if you're not striving to obey God's word, if you're not striving to do kingdom works, there is no reason for your faith to be tested. And you do not reap the kingdom benefits of maturity of completeness and coming to that place in life where you lack nothing. What's faith got to do with it? What's faith got to do with it? Faith is simply this. Believing God's word is true and then acting on it for God's purposes and not your own. I'm going to say that again. Faith is simply this. I need everybody's attention on me to hear this. Faith is simply this. Believing God's word. Believing God's word is true. And then acting on it for God's purposes and not your own. That is what pleases God. That's what pleases God. And know that when you're seeking the kingdom of God and God's righteousness, what is righteousness? Righteousness is relationship. Right standing with God. When we seek the kingdom of God and right standing with God, when we seek that first, you can expect God's promises to be fulfilled in your life. He said, if you ask anything according to my will, you can believe that you have received what you have asked for. You say, Pastor Byron, I need a lot of things right now. I need a lot of things right now. And I want to tell you that I believe from the bottom of my heart this passage of scripture that everything that we have need of is in Christ. And that as we seek first the kingdom, as we seek out righteousness, right standing with God, he says, all these things, all those things that, that I have need of will be added. God takes care of us day by day. He says, Jesus said, take no thought for what you're going to eat or what you're going to wear or how you'll be clothed. He says that God even takes care of the, the, the sparrows, the little birds. And he pointed their attention to the lilies. And he said, not even King Solomon was adorned as beautiful as they are. How much more important are you than little birds? How much more important are you than lilies of the field that God would not care for you. What God is encouraging us to do tonight is to put our trust wholly in him. Not in our own abilities because for most of us our own abilities got us nothing but stuck. It really seems like that many of us are in the middle of a lot of stuff. Some of us are probably in some of the tightest spots we've ever been in in a long time. But I need to let you know tonight that there is nothing too hard for God. There is nothing too hard 
for God. And, and it challenges my faith to be able to look you in the eye and tell you that there is nothing too hard for God. Because I've been in some tight spots. I've been in some spots where I, I thought I was not going to make it. I've been in some spots where I thought that this is the way my life is going to be forever till the day I die. But I have to let you know tonight that God is able. That God's word is true. That he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Seek him. That means go after. Y'all played hide and seek before. You got to put some energy into that thing to go find whoever's hiding. He says, if you seek him, and when he says, if you seek me, you will find me. It's not an if, an and, or maybe. He's not going to hide himself from you. But if you seek him, how do we seek? We spend time in prayer. We, we spend time in the word of God. We spend time in the fellowship of believers. We, we begin to figure out what, it is, what, what God's will is. And we heard what God's will is. We heard God's will that he says that, that none should perish. So that means I'm living my life in such a way that has redemptive power in it. That my life speaks to somebody else and says that God is real. That God is a savior. That he's a deliverer. That he fixed my life. That once he fixes my life, I'm not just going to hold up in my house and be quiet. <laughs> that I speak up and say, God is real. Yes, my God is real. For I can feel him in my soul. And I need you to know tonight that no matter how grave your situation is, there is nothing, nothing too hard for God. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill his promises to you. Don't give up. Don't give up. Because he hasn't given up on you. Somebody say he's able. Trust in the Lord. Give your heart to him tonight. Give him your situations tonight. Put your trust in the Lord and he will care for you. Bless the Lord. That is the word of the Lord for tonight.